are not old, but we're not young. We're the young old guys. Welcome to the first ever live streaming ish young old guys i'm nick and i'm justin and we're coming to you from our own homes we're doing this whole self-isolation social distancing whatever the hell this is what you talking about <laughs> so tonight we want to talk about that <laughs> um you know what does it look like to to stay home as much as possible but like six feet away like don't don't touch me don't touch me and get away you're yeah you're too close you're in my you're, you're in my lane in my bubble and then you know how do we avoid people besides just like staying in a closet hello can anybody hear me we are we are living in unprecedented times. We're living in a time where people's ability to step away and give you space is, ironically enough, not as easy to do as what a lot of people think it would be, shockingly. Yeah, the, the cultural shift has been huge. Like people who are normally like very social are having a hard time with this. <laughs> <laughs> they're closing down stanley park like all of the roads into stanley park because people keep going there and congregating on the seawall and so they're they're well, trying even just to... locally here and we even locally shut right down playgrounds yeah. school areas uh fields they don't want anybody going anywhere to socialize fraternize yeah <laughs> well i drove so... by the uh the skate park and they've got modulock fencing around it. Oh, everything. Absolutely. If it's not if it's not fencing, it's actually yellow tape. So my kids mm -hmm. and I were riding our bikes down over by the playground, just in our local neighborhood. And they saw the yellow tape. Daddy, what why why is there yellow tape? I said, We can't go on the playground, guys. I'm so sorry. So for, yeah. for everybody out there in internet land who's watching this right now, you're as affected by this as we are, whether you have kids or not. There's just no go zones. It's just no longer socially acceptable to touch. No touching. No touching. No touching. No touching. No touching. No touching. Now let's talk yeah. a little bit about the the aspect of being home. Uh, for me, actually, the last three weeks of being in this social isolation has not been as bad because I have been completely encompassed in my Volkswagen project. Now, between that and having my children, I have a very full schedule. I'm very entertained. All you need is one other person. But when my kids go home to their mother and I'm alone in my residence and I don't have car parts to put onto my car. You end up waxing your leg live on Facebook. Two. Ah! Like, oh! I didn't do that. <laughs> you know that was definitely a social experiment uh, to say the least yeah thankfully i'm not off work right now um i'm working from home as much as possible but i still go in to to do stuff with the, the schools and, and whatnot as we're and as a barber we... i just can't You're... cut it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well as i can evidence um i did it myself <laughs> It looks um, good. You did a nice job. <laughs> thank you. I learned from the best. As far as buzz cuts go, on par, buddy. So, yeah, I'm at work right now um, because education has been deemed an essential service here in BC. Um, we're supporting the frontline workers in the in the grocery stores, in the healthcare industry, um, and just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that um, the kids that are getting educated from home have technology. So I've been... Um, prepping Chromebooks and laptops for students to use at home um, as teachers, you know, do this. Which is interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Here we are using Zoom. Ironically enough, our microphones that we're using to record this whole thing are also Zoom. Maybe you're catching our subtle hints about what we've done. 
Zoom zoom. Anyway, <laughs> I don't drive a Mazda though, so I can't do the zoom zoom. Yeah, uh, not a not a promoter or what do they call it? Um, no, not, not a sponsor. A spo- not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Uh, but look <laughs> at what's happening. We are now taking classroom settings, and we are forced to incorporate them into our homes. Now, I mean, yeah. is that not a fascinating concept? But at the same time, I can just see parents unnerved and unhinged yeah. across the board oh, here, man. whether it's friends that I'm speaking to uh, over Facebook or some of the comments that you read along there. They're just like, I got to do this now. How many projects? Yeah. And I'm like, they're, and they're full on panicking <laughs> because they have no idea. No I mean, I went, idea. Out, I went out to uh, Home Depot and I actually bought uh, a whiteboard, uh, a four by eight foot whiteboard that I was able to hang with mirror hangers. And simply make my own classroom setting for my children. Mm-hmm. And I love it because it's become this amazingly valuable thing. The children don't waste paper. They go, they draw on my whiteboard. I just wipe it off at the end of the day. I've only wasted, what? Yeah. Uh, watermark, water dry, dry erase markers. It's great. Yeah. And we but do we do I, something similar. You know, yeah, we have a yeah we have a, a small a smallish whiteboard that we oh um, yeah we put on like the day's assignments for the kids. You know, we want you to draw this and write about this, um, and maybe a third thing uh, like a Bible verse or something like that. Um, yeah, and then and then Hannah and the kids get into uh, you know coloring around it and drawing little goombas and koopa troopers all over it it's it's really cool yeah or a, a picture of the related item but from a social distancing standpoint just what they're doing for the sake of our children's ed- education that is the time we're living in we don't mm-hmm. want to forego our children's education yet we are forced to still rely on technology i yeah. mean now more than ever. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! Yeah, and and having the the broadband revolution, you know, of the last decade has really helped that. I mean, even five years ago, what we're doing was I mean, you had Google Hangouts or you had, you know, FaceTime and, and met uh, Skype but no real like large group um yes. it didn't exist it, it, just didn't, was it was not it either it either was tied into like the big enterprise space that cost a ton of money um or just didn't exist and then yeah. with zoom you know we can break out classes and we can do all sorts of stuff so it's kind of neat i like it a lot and the yeah, fact that we fair. have we have you know phones and we have laptops and we have iPads and, and Samsung tablets, Android tablets, um, laptops with webcams in them. Um, the connectedness is is uh, is really awesome and scary all at the same time. It is. Um, yeah. No, it's very good to know that we have the ability to still have this social outlet. So for any of you introverts out there, you're probably fine. You're used to doing this. You come home, you just do your regular, you know, Joe Schmo, whatever. This is your routine. Uh, but for anybody who's an extrovert, not unlike myself, <laughs> you find yourself reaching out to others for either entertainment or you're looking to others for attention. Can I please have your attention? Now, yeah. I mean, my, my own personal experience going back to what we were talking about before is that I like to see people's reactions. And when you're literally (laughs) devoid of that, I had strep at the beginning of January and I was literally quarantined to my house with strep for two weeks. My throat was so sore and I just couldn't even like, I couldn't manage. Mm -hmm. But what made it worse was I exhausted my entire library of (laughs) movies that I wanted to watch. Thank you, Netflix. And I don't even think I had (laughs) Disney Plus at the time. But regardless, I was just completely at the mercy of praying that my sleeping meds were enough to clunk me out or (laughs) I was going to have to read. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, I I know the the whole thing about quarantine from when I was a teenager. I got whooping cough when I was 14. Yeah. And that was a month. Yeah, that was a month and a half of quarantine. 
not going out, not seeing my friends. And it was hard because the place we were living was off the back of our church. And I could hear the youth group playing floor hockey every Friday night. And I had to go for a month and a half without seeing anybody. And I built a lot of Lego. Awesome. <laughs> like I, I, we have a lot of Lego and, you know, I built my sister and I, we, we challenged ourselves to see if we could build a tower using every single piece of Lego. And we got it nice. to like six foot seven. I am a master builder. And <laughs> it was, it was impressive. Yeah, we're not talking yeah. Duplos here. We are from the planet Duplo, and we are here to destroy you. We're talking like legit no, we're talking piece like Lego. Actual like Lego Legos, yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. So it started out with like the, the tree fort stuff and then went up to the space, and yeah, it was really, really cool. Well, you know what? We have two, we have two dynamics right now. We have the children's social distancing. <laughs> And we have adult social distancing. <laughs> Who do you think is going to do better through this whole thing? I truly think it's the children. Because they don't have a choice. The parents are making them. And then the parents are the ones who are screwing it up by going out into the stores and chatting across the, uh, you know, the aisle of vegetables. Hurry up! But or... what I mean is that from an entertainment standpoint, they have more to offer at home for the sake of their to preoccupy mm -hmm. their minds like you said about yeah. the lego 100 percent. when i was at home sick or doing anything at home when i was younger i immediately defaulted to my lego sets 100 percent. yeah yeah well you have your lego you can pull out your coloring you know do some drawing <laughs> The Lego I would pull out, maybe not as much the coloring, uh, unless wiring diagrams counts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, legit, like uh, I constantly, I think when I was 27 or 28, uh, I busted out my Lego one last time in my, 20, in my late 20s because I wanted to perfect the Back to the Future hover conversion. I remember that. Uh, of the wheels. Do you remember when I actually built it and, and mm -hmm. they just pulled right out? Flying DeLorean With the wheels that are folding, they're all very cool and I made it myself. That was, for me, I needed to accomplish that. So it was, for me, it was a milestone in my life. Small, perhaps, but I was completely over overcome with like i have to do this yeah so it wasn't hard to just jump in and do it just do it it's just finding things to do and you know how do you avoid people um, when everyone is so used to having that interaction you know walking down the hallways at work it's like you're smiling because and amused at each other as you're like doing this orbit <laughs> around each other in the hallway. And we're back. <laughs> Experiencing some Wi-Fi technical difficulties. <laughs> Joys of Zoom technology. Get on with it, man. <laughs> yes. Actually, the internet, it, it dropped out on me and just decided to go... <sighs> Social distancing at its finest, having troubleshoot area, area there. So that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were talking about children having an easier time with uh, social distancing versus adults. Now, I mean, when I have a project on the go, social distancing is not an issue. I can get completely yeah. immersed in that, and I'm busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Children, I think, can more or less do the same with the exception of coming up to you going, Mom! 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 Mommy! 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 Mama, 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 ma, 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 mum, 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 mummy, mummy, 
Mama! 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 What? Hi. <laughs> uh, daddy, I'm bored. Daddy, I'm bored. Daddy, I'm bored. Daddy, I'm bored. What do I do? What do I do? What do I mean? You want to get? You want to see my Lego? You want to see my Lego? Can I show yeah. you this? I want to. See... I love when kids come up to me and they're like, "Ah, oh, Daddy, I'm hungry," and I'm like, "No, you're not. You're bored. We just had lunch." So, kids, stop your whining. Stop your whining. There's just nothing to whine about. You got everything you need. I love my children, but not too long ago, I made them a, a breakfast. I made them a full balanced breakfast. It was huge. I made everything for them. It took me like an hour and a half, you know, I wanted to surprise them. So I made the breakfast, I put it all on the table, I wake up, kids, come to the breakfast table, I'm gonna, I made you breakfast, all right. I sit down, I go into my office, 10 seconds later I hear this, ah! <laughs> and what's wrong? There's pulp in the orange juice. <laughs> pulp, pulp! You got the orange juice with pulp in it! Like you get it out, man. I've seen you eat an orange. That's pretty much full pulp. <laughs> Cracks yep. me up. I have to go potty. You just went potty. But I really have to go. You just went. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's for my uh, daughter and my son, it's the other way around. Go pee. I don't have to, but they're legit dancing. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. So, uh, what has your biggest takeaway from uh, all this social distancing uh, been? I think they, the my main takeaway is that people haven't been taking it seriously as as seriously as they should be, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the the whole thing, just kind of, they're just now taking it seriously, and we're already a month in it. You know in in our area and now they're starting to really get it so it's been slow on the uptake uh, my yeah, position I... my work allows me to be social distant at the best of times um, but i'm still i'm still gloving up i'm still sanitizing everything that i touch and avoid you know all the social circus that uh, exists <laughs> Circus is exactly what it is. You know um, what? This is a circus. It's a complete circus. And we're all just song and dance people just dancing to the tune of the government's drum right now. <laughs> Yeah, and, and there's nothing we can do about it. I do miss having you next to me, my little, you know, co-pilot, or, I don't know. You know the, yeah. We're both we're both kind of piloting this bad boy, but you know what I mean, co-pilot, co-pilot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, when, we, when we were planning out this social distancing episode, we had the idea to, you know, be sitting back to back with two cameras. And, Six feet away, you know, yeah. But out of frame, and then, you know, reaching across and passing something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but... Since it's now illegal to do that, we're not doing that. <laughs> yes, well... And we I don't heard... want video evidence of us doing that. Well, last I heard, $25,000 fine for anybody that uh, breaks, you know, this proverbial curfew. It depends on the region. So... I think I think it's, it's not that big for personal. It's that big for businesses or something like that in, in our likely, area that don't, don't support that. I don't know. I'd have to read it. Yeah. Well, at this point, I'm glad that uh, for the most part, I mean, I've still been able to move around and do things I've needed to do. But with the mm -hmm. precursor that when I get what I need, I social distance completely. And yeah, I guess for the most part, it's fairly normal. I don't know. It's also very comical because I, I am watching people post videos on Facebook where they are just yelling at each other. And uploading the footage and getting hits. It just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's, just, it's become this laughable concept. Mm -hmm. And people aren't taking it seriously enough. But I mean, I, I think there was, re, you know, realistically a time when I didn't either. You know, a couple of weeks ago when it was like, what's going on? Like, 
This isn't well, yeah. this is a flu. It's the flu. Like, what the frick? Yeah, well, and at the beginning of spring break, you know, in the middle of March, everyone around here is like, well, that's it's in Italy. Like, it's in China. It's not here. And no, it, it's here. It was here. And, you know, it's good that we're taking it seriously so it doesn't get any worse than it has been. You know, like, close the, the borders. Just going, the states is just going nuts because they didn't take it seriously. Um, so make sure you buy enough toilet paper people oh god you know what okay if... this is so funny yeah. <laughs> because i actually saw a guy do the calculations on how much you know if somebody bought like uh 20 bags of or 10 to 20 bags of these toilet paper rolls the family of four quarantined for the required 14 days would need to get 182 times a day to use the purchase amount of toilet paper at 20 sheets per shit. now let's all calm down 187 times to utilize the toilet paper a day yeah and i mean i burst out laughing that was the funniest thing ever i'm like <laughs> everybody for the flu hits yeah. it's respiratory yeah. and everybody's out grabbing it's like, swipe it's like <laughs> it's like the 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 cases of people who had any sort of gi problem from this are like really really small and it's probably because you have a gi problem and covid19 at the same yeah. time <laughs> IBS. <laughs> it's not. You know what? That's it's more that people need to be going out too, right? and panic buying rice and beans, not toilet paper. <laughs> I know. Right now, we need the sup. We need to be able to, you know. But you know what? Uh, grocery stores were not. I mean, yeah, they were out of toilet paper, but all of the other necessities—fruits, vegetables, canned goods, dude, milk, eggs. Everything's there. I've got to get out of here. Oh, down. Get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please let me handle this. I've got to get out of here. Calm down now. Get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Doctor, you're on the phone. Everything's going to be all right. Sister, please handle this. I've got to get out of here. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Everybody just panicked, uh, which goes to say, I mean, Every movie that we've ever seen got it right. The mass yep. populace just loses yep. their mind and then just screws everybody else up. It's yeah, it's apparently fight or we're flight. crazy. You know, the the intelligence of a crowd is really small. Oh yes, <laughs> like, oh yes, really small. individually we're smart but you throw us in a panic group and it's like everybody's running off a cliff game over at this point i mean i still have a bag of toilet paper that i've had for over two months and it's mm -hmm. fine i yeah. i have not gone out and done any crazy buying sprees because there's no point buy enough for you for your family so yep. that other people can do the same thing for theirs let's not be selfish people come on yeah, take it easy. Take it easy. Take a breath. <laughs> we we all need to just kind of take a, a moment, you know, sit cross-legged in the living room. Randy. <sighs> Meditate. Breathe in and breathe out, and just hoarding. <laughs> yeah, that's another episode. But yeah. <coughs> yes. Would you like to talk about hoarding at some point with us? Because I think that would just be right on. Yeah. No, uh, I think it's safe to assume that with everything going on in today's uh, crazy pandemic time, uh, that uh, wise decisions are just now being made. And I'm glad that we have the medical uh, teams doing such a good job and yeah. trying to combat this. But I mean, uh, one of the videos I watched was a nurse saying that uh, they're making life and death decisions now because mm -hmm. they don't have enough ventilators and they don't have enough masks and they don't have enough medication they're out of Tylenol and I'm watching this yeah. going like is this how much of this is just you know, like for hits or how much of it's real I I'd I say in some of the bigger hospitals in it's probably in real hard hit areas it's very real especially yeah. in like New York and and in the hospitals in Italy and Spain and China yeah no oh, it's yes. very real this happened to be in the U.S. where the feed was coming out of, but it was just, it was so, mm -hmm. it was, it's very sobering, people. I mean, if these are the circumstances that we're currently living in, the best thing you can do is stay home and take care of yourself and your family. 
and watch us on YouTube. The young old guys. Yeah, and watch us on YouTube and wash your hands. I've got so many, uh, I mean, when you think about, you know, being a single father, nice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as, as a single father, I have to exchange my children with their mother back and forth, back and forth, and trust that we are remaining socially distant from everybody else so that when we exchange these kids back and forth we're not worrying uh as to whether yeah. or not one has contracted something and so what's what did they say it's uh 14 days before you're even aware that you have it 14 to 20 yeah 14 to 20 days so you could be a carrier and not even realize it yeah and you you could potentially not even know where you got it from because it it has such a large uh window of time that you know you have to gestate it for i legit watched um pandemic or whatever that movie is um contagion contagion okay yeah so the other day i'm bored i i put it up on and i remember just watching that movie and at the very end just going do you understand barely slept <laughs> That was a good movie, yeah. and ironically enough, I mean, not too far off from what we're currently experiencing right now. Uh, so here we have mm -hmm. a film that was filmed like in 2015, or I don't ever know when it, when it was filmed, and they nailed it. I think it. it was even. I think it was back when we maybe were maybe older. In the actually, age. It, I think it's like 2009 or 10 when it came out because it's part of the um, H1N1 pandemic. Right, I think that could be it. And now, excuse me. Oh, it's late here right now, but it's not too late for you to wear a mask and wash your hands. Okay. <laughs> uh, and stay away from people. Yeah. You need to practice. You need to practice social distancing, like the um, the Monty Python sketch, "How Not to Be Seen." In this picture, there are forty-seven people. None of them can be seen. In this film, we hope to show you how not to be seen. This is Mr. E. R. Bradshaw of Napier Court, Black Lion Road, London, SE 14. He cannot be seen. Now, I'm going to ask him to stand up. Mr. Bradshaw, will you stand up, please? This demonstrates the value of not being seen. Are you social distancing? As much as I can. No, not you. Sorry. I'm, I'm oh, talking to you, Grandpa. You, 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 you,